Hello, hello, Bernadette here. Welcome Facebook friends. This is our special Facebook Live where I'm answering all of your questions about online profits. And how this live stream today came about is you may or may not have seen, um, over the last week or so, I did five or six Facebook Lives where I was doing a deep dive into different aspects of growing a profitable online business. And uh, we had lots of questions come in during those live streams, but also posted on the post afterwards, so I thought it could be helpful to do a special roundup today where I'll cover off all the questions that have been answered, asked so far. And feel free, if you're just joining us, to type in your questions, uh, anything that you want to ask me today about growing an online business, or even if you just want to say hi, hello in the chat, it would be great to see you. Um, I'm also going to spend a little bit of time today talking to you a bit about the Online Profits University, because I'm aware that I didn't do that so much in the live streams. And the Online Profits University is a brand new program uh, that I've just launched, which can help you start and grow a profitable online business, no matter what stage of business that you're at. And I'll explain to you exactly how it works and how we're able to help people at all stages of business. Whether you're someone who has a vision for an online business, but you're like still figuring out how to get started. You might even be asking yourself, what am I gonna sell? Who will, who will be buying what I want to offer online? Um, or you might be online already, maybe you're already making some sales online, maybe you're doing some business, but you'd like to ramp it up. Um, so I'll be explaining about that as we go through. So welcome everyone. And I have Caroline helping me today because um, it's not always easy for me to see what's going on in the ch chat. So let me just pull up the questions that we have so far. It's Caroline, I don't know what I've managed to do there, but I just lost the questions that have been asked um, so far. Okay, great, so Caroline, I can see you're with me. Right, I'm gonna dive into these questions. Okay, water first. For some reason, these Facebook Lives make me really thirsty. I never drink as much as I do when I'm on air doing these. Mm. Right, so, let us start. So, um, this is someone who's been joining quite a few of the live streams. I recognize your name, and I hope I pronounced it right. I think it's Nyo, do. I think that's pronounced it right. Forgive me if I haven't pronounced your name correctly. Um, so the first question is, must I have a website? And I'm so happy this question came up because, yeah, you would think, well, obviously, if you want to have an online business, the first thing that you need to do is have a website. And actually, that's not true. And actually, I'm glad it's come up as a question because this is a myth that stops people before they even get started online. Because if you think about it, creating a website that's quite a big project, isn't it? You know, you've got to figure out who you're targeting, um, your about me page, you will need testimonials. There's a lot of things that you simply don't even have when you're just getting started online. So let me sh tell you, there is only one page you need to have when you get started online, and that is an opt-in page or a squeeze page. In other words, a page where you can capture someone's email address in exchange for typically some juicy bit of content that you're offering, some some um, freemium, some freebie, something that's got a high perceived value that solves a problem that your target audience has, and they say, yeah, thanks, I, I'll raise my hands for that, I'll, here's my email address in exchange for that. That is the only page you need to get started. And you might be surprised to know, you can make money online even that with that one page. How? How is that possible? How is it possible if you don't have anything to sell and you don't have your own e-commerce site set up where you're going to take, you know, orders and have your merchant account and all of that? Let me explain why. Um, you can actually make money online by promoting other people's products and programs. I know we've got some questions about that today, so I'll come on to how you find them, how you choose them, etc. and what your criteria should be. But if you think about it, this is a great way to do what we call profit without products. So the fact is, you know, I don't care how many people are telling you, hey, it's really easy, you can go and create your online program in 48 hours. Yeah, you might be able to create the content for your program in 48 hours, but let me tell you, as someone who's been there and done it and guided other people through this process, to set up the infrastructure of your website ready to take payments, so a sales page ready to take payments, you are going to need some type of shopping cart facility, you are gonna need some type of merchant account, and it just takes a little bit of time to get these things together. So in the meantime, so you can start making money right now, let's look at what is it that you could, you could monetize right now. Now, if, you've, if, you've, if you're offering 
from an opt-in page, some type of freebie, and people are joining your list, you now have an audience that you can nurture, you can build a relationship with, you can get to know, like, and trust you. You can serve that audience. You can ask questions. To, you know, tell me what your biggest problems are. Tell me what your biggest challenges are. Like, show interest in them and think about how you can create value for them. And if you see that people are struggling with a certain topic, go out and find someone else online who's already created a solution to that problem. So find someone that you feel really good about endorsing or promoting. It could even be a product or program that you have used. Now, in online marketing, it's not unusual to get paid commissions of up to 40%. And, you know, online products can start anything from, you know, a few dollars all the way up to thousands of dollars. But just think about it, 40% on a thousand dollar purchase, that's, that's a nice commission, isn't it? $400 commission for you. You haven't, had the truck, you haven't had to set up a sales funnel. You haven't had to go and create a webinar. You haven't had to go and um, invest in a membership site and creating your programs and spend months getting your, your product ready. You, you actually, there are things, you can basically make money by growing your list and then directing the people on that list to products and programs that you believe on. in. Now, I know people who have done this and grown a six-figure business before they even launch their own product. And the advantages of doing this, I, I mean, I, this honestly, if I was getting started today, this is the business model I would start with. I'd be growing my list, and while I was getting to know my list, I'd be recommending out products and programs because the fact of doing that would also give me really valuable insights into what works conversion-wise for my audience. What messages do they resonate with? What messages turn they off? turn them off? Which are the products and programs they love to buy? Because even if I'm sending them to a partner's web page, I can learn a lot from looking at that partner's web page and understand, um, understanding everything that's going on behind the scenes in that. When you, when you work as a partner like this, you can get behind the scenes of someone else's business. You can understand the whole conversion mechanism. So it's a fantastic education. So to me, this is a way that you can, you can earn as you learn. <laughs> and um, I need to find a word. To make, for making money while you grow. <laughs> if you can think of one, put it in the chat, but next time I'm back, I'll have, I'll have come up with a, a catchy rhyme for that. So um, no, you don't need a website. To get started making money online, you just need one page. But the one thing you absolutely do need to do is you need to start growing your list. And it is never too soon to start growing your list. Now, the way to grow your list is to offer something of value on that page. And we have a qu couple of questions about that because during the live streams, I actually went into detail and I gave some examples of free eBooks and free PDFs and free reports that my clients had created to put on their opt-in pages. So let's uh, just dig into the pages about um, lead magnets. So Lisa had said, I'd love more interest on the lead magnets. And let me see, I'm gonna just check these off so I can uh, go through that. Um, so there's a couple of questions. So, okay, so let's talk about lead magnets. So the idea of the lead magnet is that it's, it's a piece of value that you can start with. Now, a lot of people make a mistake here that they think, oh, they feel under pressure. I have to demonstrate I'm the expert and let me show everything I know about this pro pro uh, product or this topic. And that's, that's not how you do it. Like the more specific your ebook can be, the better. And really you wanna hone in on one specific problem. So for example, you can see all the questions that I'm covering in this live stream. It's telling me people have questions about how to create a lead magnet. So in the new year, you will be seeing from me um, some, some piece of training that I will put out there, some piece of free content on how to create lead magnets. And how to identify what your audience really wants so you know you're creating an irresistible lead magnet. I would talk about the thinking that goes in you know, to getting the hook just right. I would talk about what to include in your lead magnet. And let me say a couple of things about that now. You, um, you want something that demonstrates your credibility and showcases your expertise. Now, some people get intimidated at this point and I've heard people say, but Bernadette, I'm not really, you know, I'm not really an expert. And so I, I need you to understand that to be an authority, you do not have to have like world-class expertise that, you know, if there was an Olympics for your subject matter, you'd be getting gold. 
There's a, there's a phrase that I first heard from Dan Kennedy, which is, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed man is king. So you just need to know enough to be able to serve your audience. So, um, you know, for example, when I started teaching people how to make money online, I hadn't made my first million online at that point, but I had started and created a successful email newsletter and people were asking me how to do it. So did I have authority on that subject matter? Yeah, on that piece of the puzzle I did because I had created a newsletter, I'd been publishing it for a couple of years, I'd been building my audience, I'd figured out what newsletters really worked and what didn't, I developed some systems for publishing it. So I had like a package of information that I'd learned through doing in my business that then could literally be transported into someone else's business. So a shortcut. So someone else who wants to learn that doesn't have to reinvent the wheel, doesn't have to figure it all out, you no know, trial and error like I did. There's the, the value is it basically going here, I figured out the system, take it. Just one, one key system. So that was, that was actually a piece of training that I used to offer in my business years ago. And it was because lots of my audience were asking about doing that. So um, you don't need to be like a world-class authority and don't let that stop you. Like I often think when people are starting to go into that place of like, you know, who am I to do this? It always reminds me of that Marian Williamson quote that says, we ask ourselves, <coughs> excuse me, we ask ourselves, who am I to be gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You're a child of God and your playing serve doesn't serve, doesn't serve, your playing small doesn't serve the world. Sorry, I'm just doing that from memory, so. Um, so just bear that in mind as well, that you know, if you're kind of asking yourself that, oh, who am I, oh, oh but it's just little on me, I'm not an expert, I really wanna challenge you around that, because I know that you have unique life experiences, um, talents, skills, expertise that have come uniquely from your life experience that have positioned you to be able to contribute to the world. So I wasn't planning on talking about this today, but this story's just popped into my mind, so I am gonna share it, because I think it could be apt for people watching today. So do you remember years ago, I mean, it must be going back 12 years ago, was it? The tsunami that happened uh, at the end of December in Asia. And a couple of months later, one of the benefits of working from home is you get occasionally get to watch daytime TV. And um, Oprah Winfrey uh, still had her show running then. And she had a whole episode dedicated to the aftermath of the tsunami. Where are they now? What happened to people who'd been caught with it, who'd lost members? And it uh, was an important topic for Oprah because one of her team, one of her interior designers who worked on a show, was actually there and lost his partner during the tsunami. So it was obviously like, you know, really close to home for Oprah. And during the show, they talked about this woman that she referred to as the angel on the hill. And um, as they told this woman's story, um, she's a Swedish woman. Um, well, let me tell you the story and then you'll hear it. So what happened was, when the tsunami came, the first sort of indicator that there was going to be a tsunami is the tide really, really went out. So the ocean bed was exposed. Now, it just so happened, this Swedish woman had a couple of these years earlier been working in Hawaii, where she had been working with a TV production company, making um, a, a, a documentary about tsunamis. So when she saw that happen, she had information she knew what was going to happen next so she started to warn people on the beach that they needed to get off to the beach and, and run like so who knows who knows we'll never know how many souls were saved that day because because of that little piece of knowledge that she was then able to share and impart in that moment so you know if you've heard the story of the tsunami the two big waves came crashing and people you know described it it's like being in a washing machine with barbed wire there's so much debris in the water that even if you were surviving the the water and able to breathe in the water there was a good chance you were being injured by an object that was knocking you or cutting you in the water and a group of people who survived both waves had assembled on a hill this is where the angel on the hill comes in now it just turned out that this same woman years earlier had planned to become a doctor 
She'd actually dropped out of medical school, but not before she'd had a couple of years of medical training and enough medical training to know how to set up a makeshift A&E uh, you know, place that then is able to start administering and getting people organised to start helping the people who'd been injured. So as I was watching this story, I thought, isn't that amazing? Because here is a woman who, by the sounds of it, has a pretty checkered career history. I mean, you know, one moment she's training to be a doctor, the next thing she's gonna be a broadcaster. Who else, you know, what else had she done in her life? And I'm pretty certain that at some moment, I, you know, either a loved one or she herself had gone, when am I gonna get my act together? When am I gonna get this figured out? When am I, when am I gonna get my proper job? When, I, when am I gonna get started on my proper career? And what really struck me about this was that it, the life experience that she'd had today in the bigger plan, in the divine plan, had equipped her and positioned her perfectly to make a difference on that day to people who need it. Lives were saved because of her checkered career history. So one of the things that I have observed, because I've been teaching people how to get into business, grow a business, bring that business online, package their expertise online. I've been doing this myself for 15 years. I've been teaching people, other people how to do it for the past 10. And one of the things that I've noticed is one way that people hold themselves back is they, they have a story of, I'm not enough or, you know, I, I'm not the expert in anything. Who am I to have this? And like, what I want to get across to you at this moment is, I, I believe that everything that's happened to you up until this moment, everything you've experienced up this moment, has actually been part of your, um, your divine training plan to make a difference when it matters. So even if you can't see in that, yet, that yet, please believe in my belief in that for you. So we digress there slightly. We're actually talking about ebooks. We're talking about how to choose a top topic for an ebook. So choose an ebook that you where you can uh, where you have you. There's a specific problem that you have figured out. There's something that you have a solution to, and ideally you want to solve something that you know is an issue for your target audience. So go and you need to go and do research. Identify where your target audience is hanging out online. Go and find them, listen in on the conversations that they're having, the questions they're asking, the things that they say they're struggling with. Survey them if you need to, and that will point you in the direction of some piece of value that you can create to share, give them free, to start that relationship with their, them joining your list. And you'll offer that on your opt-in page. Now, the next question is, how long should your ebook be? Well, your ebook should be long enough to fulfill the promise that you're making with your ebook. Now, with, with free content, um, less is actually more. Because there's a couple of things that you wanna do with your lead magnet is you wanna demonstrate your expertise, you wanna demonstrate your authority, and um, you wanna you know, fulfill, make good on the promise you made. So if you told people that you were gonna show them uh, you know, three recipes for a family to, uh, a, a family of four that costs less than ten dollars a day then you you make good on that <laughs> give, give it to them like give, deliver it um, but then you also want to seed what the next step is so um, you know if you have already created something that you want to sell online or even if that you want to sell in person you want to give people directions to the next step so your lead magnet, your free lead magnet, I mean, we have lead magnets that are just like between six and 20 pages. It doesn't need to be um, huge. And actually too much, can, too big can be too much. Because with lead magnets, you kind of want an instant benefit. You want instantly consumable. So imagine if you came to download a book from me, you download it and it's 300 pages. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go, okay, I'll read that later. And chances are you'll never get round to it. So I like things to be short and sweet, to give, deliver some immediate value that's not difficult to consume and people can go, wow, that was, that was great. Yeah, that, that, that helped. I got something usable there. So, and then, you know, they can move on. Now, with a paid ebook, it's slightly different because probably with a paid ebook, you're, you're solving a bigger problem and you've made a bigger promise. But again, the principles apply. Your ebook needs to be as long as it needs to be to get the job done. Okay, uh, right, so let's go for, for our other questions. So 
Um, Nathan had asked, um, and I know I answered it in that live stream, but just in case anybody else have the question, he says, I always wanted to write an ebook. What's the best platform to design on? Well, you can write an ebook in a Word doc, right? That's, that's uh, whatever your word processes are is on your laptop or computer, write it there. And then you will need to have it formatted into a PDF. Now, if you want to, you can do it yourself and you can go and download software. There's free software online to turn a, a document into a PDF. So that's one thing you can do. If you want to really pretty it up, it's worth going to Fiverr and searching for people on Fiverr. That's F-I-V-E-R-R. Who, um, who will actually do the job of formatting your ebook for you. And you get something that looks really professional. It's got a nice image. It's eye-catching, bright colours, um, ideally proofread and you know, all nicely formatted that just really uh, represents you well. So um, that's, that's all you need. And then the next thing is how are you going to deliver it? And so you need some type of delivery system. Now, for a free ebook, the software that I would recommend is Lead Pages. So Lead Pages, do you remember I said you only need one page online? Lead Pages is software that you will enable you to set up that opt-in page really quickly. It will integrate with your list manager. So whether you're using MailChimp or Constant Contact or whatever it is, it means that you've got that page up and running, you can start capturing email addresses. And one of Lead Pages features is that it will instantly deliver your lead magnet. So you can basically upload your lead magnet and then it gets delivered. So lead magnets does the whole thing in terms of growing your list. Now, if you want to sell your lead magnet, you're gonna need some type of shopping cart software to deliver it. When I started out, I used one shopping cart for this. Um, you can, uh, one shopping cart is the main one I would think of. You could use Infusionsoft for this as well. Active Campaign is another one. And um, Samcart, I'm not sure if Samcart, yes, Samcart, you should be able to use it as well. So that's, that. but bear in mind, you're only gonna need those things when you're ready to start taking orders online. So don't, don't think you have to go out and get all of this software all at once. I'm very much about, when it comes to this, doing the right steps in the right order, and that's gonna save you money. So you're only literally paying for the software at the time that you need it and you can use it. So let me just come back to the questions on the lead magnet. So um, Yo had also asked about pages for an ebook, and um, we've talked about some examples there. Um, oh, this is a good one. This was asked in one of our very um, first live streams. So Che had asked. Aren't you scared your ebook will be copied and spread over the web? And again, this is interesting. It's something that stops people. It's the idea of like, oh, well, my goodies are so precious and, and I, I'm only going to you know, share them with people who pay me. And you can't do online marketing with that way of thinking. Like you, you have to be willing to share value first. Um, I would say the real currency online is attention. You know, it's no joke that it's called paying attention. And if you want to be successful online, you are gonna to have to demonstrate that you have earned the right to your audience's attention. And you do that by sharing value. I shared on another live stream that if every single day, you, when you woke up, you asked yourself, how can I add value to my audience today? You will not go far wrong because the, the reciprocal effect of sharing that kind of value is, is huge. The goodwill that gets generated, people are more likely to share your content. Now, and this is a, an important caveat, at some point after de demonstrating value, you have to ask for the money. You have to say, okay, if you want to know more, here it is, and offer the product or program and tell, tell people how much it is. You have to do that. So don't, where people go wrong is, is, it seems to me there's two extremes of delivering value online. People either go to, hey, I need to protect my book goodies and they just aren't sharing enough value or they are sharing so much value, but they're never actually asking for you know, anything back. And so you have to find that balance and you need to understand that no matter how much you give away for free, Sooner or later, for someone to really get results through what you have to offer, they have to be invested. Like, typically, we don't value 
as much the things that are for free as the things that we paid for. Like if this was a paid live stream today and you know, you'd uh, pay for a ticket for it, you would be here taking your notes, making sure you squeezed every last drop of juice out of this experience. And you'd be making sure that you went off and implemented to get your return on investment. So you're actually doing people a disservice if you don't at some point ask them to invest, but it's finding the balance. And if you wanna stand out online, one way to get a great reputation online is to be known for delivering value. But people are saying, you know what, every time I watch his video or I read her blog or you know I go to her page, I'm getting something. Every time I get an email, I learn something. As a seed gets planted, a thought gets put in my mind, it shifts my way of looking at something. I get a great tip, I get a great usable tip. That's the sort of, that's the, that's the standard that you're aiming for where you're delivering value online. So no, the short answer is I'm not scared of the money but will be copied and spread over the web and nor should you be. Because the other thing that um, comes into play here is that we're different personalities and all personalities resonate with you know, some people more than others. So I, I believe in online, and I believe this is true for you, that I have a natural monopoly. Like there's, there's plenty of people teaching how to have a successful online business. And you know, some of them might resonate with the, you more or less than me. And it's like, well, it's great. I, I, like I stand for success in business. I'm glad there are other people teaching this. Like I, I, I think everybody <laughs> could have an online business and have the freedom and flexibility. So I'm less attached to whether people, you know, choose me as their teacher or, or someone else. I, I just trust that, that, we, there's, that there's enough for all of us to have our audience to be able to serve serve our tribe. So no, I'm not scared the ebook will be copied and spread over the web. And you know, the, the, the thing is, <laughs> even if it is happening, as long as you are doing enough seeding in your ebook, what if, your ebook gets you know into the hands of someone that hasn't downloaded it from your website you know if there are enough links in it back to you you're still gonna there's still you're still gonna get some payoff from it so no that that doesn't worry me it doesn't stop me okay right and uh, Teresa is asking any tips on naming your business and the answer to that is yes um, specifically online it is great if you can to use words in your business name that match keywords that your audience would be searching for. So um, there is a tool called Word Tracker, and if you go to Word Tracker, you can get it for seven days of free trial. Go to Word Tracker and you can type in, start with keywords and phrases that you think your audience might be uh, looking for. So someone, this just brings to mind, Shona, who's in our Online Profits University, has submitted a question about yoga teachers for another um, training that I'm doing later today. So, you know, the, her keywords could be yoga online. That could be an example of a keyword. Well, the nice thing is with Word Tracker, if you type that in, Word Tracker will give you other suggestions and it doesn't stop there. It will then also show you how heavily searched those terms are. So you can get an indication of what, what there's already a market for, what people are already looking for online. So if you can find a way to incorporate those words into your domain name, that, that's great. But notice there's a difference between your domain name and your business name. So my business name, my registered legal entity is Bernadette Doyle Development Limited. That's my business name. But under that name, I'm able to trade under Client Magnets. I have a website called clientmagnets.com. We have onlineprofitsuniversity.com is another one of my domain. And I have the domain name bernadettedoyle.com. So you can have multiple domains under one registered business. So you, keep, you can just keep your registered business name quite generic. What's more important when it comes to online business is like the, the branding and the URL that people are gonna be typing in. And where, if possible, if you can tie that in with um, keywords, that's great. But also remember, nothing's being cast in stone. So for example, the Online Profits University, I've been online for 15 years and we just registered the Online Profits University domain you know, it, it, this year when we got ready to open and launch the Online Profits University. So who knows what other domains I'll have down, down the line, but it will always be based on what do I perceive is a, is a need or a want coming up from my audience and then you know, what, what are the keywords for that and then go and creating the domain that name way. So I hope that's helped. 
Uh, Teresa, okay, let's keep flying through this question. So feel free also um, uh, to ask questions in the in the chat, and I can see we've got these questions come through already. So um, this is a more general question from Mazrul, who's saying, "How can I start an online business?" And so let me just give you like the, the what an online business is is really <laughs> what it really comes down to. So this is the short answer, and if you want to see a longer answer to this, I suggest you go and check out the Online Profits University page. But the short answer is. You find a group of people who have a want, <laughs> who have a problem that you can solve. That's step one. Step two is you go and create something that solves that problem. That's step two. And um, step three is you get paid, right? Those are the three steps. And if you look at any online business, what's actually happening, even in a, whether the business is only making hundreds or thousands of dollars, or millions of dollars, what you'll basically see is that, that it's that basic formula that's just happening either on a small scale or on a bigger scale. That is it. So it always comes down to what is it that people want? How do I give it to them? How do I get paid for that? So that's pretty much the short answer to your question, as Azraul. And you know, I have answered it more fully in the live streams that we did for this training. And I also suggest that you come and check out the Online Profits University as well. Um, Right, so I'll stay with eBooks just for a moment because um, we had a, a question from Olivia who said, I have a successful hair salon and I'm looking for other channels of income. Do you feel that would eBook would be better targeted to clients or to business owners? Well, the answer is you could have both. Um, so what uh, I noticed in the questions that Olivia had s also submitted in that chat was Olivia's actually achieved quite incredible growth, where it's 23% growth month on month. So she's doing something in her online and in her hair salon business that I know other hair salon owners would want to know about. I also think it's easier to target hair salon owners online because, you know, it, it's easier to find a group of or groups of hair salon owners congregating. There will already be websites or forums or associations that are set up for them. So it's a reachable audience and you have something that I know would be of value to those people. So I would, prior you can do both, but I would prioritize that. Okay, another question from Nathan. Um, and we're getting this a lot, so I'm gonna cover it. I have covered it, um, but it keeps coming up about eBooks. How long should an eBook be not just the quality, but quantity expected by the reader. So what it comes down to, Nathan, is you need it to be long enough to deliver on the promise that your ebook is making. So if you're saying how, you know, five ways to um, wake up in the morning feeling refreshed, if that's the problem that you're solving, helping people to bounce out of bed with a spring in their step, then, and you've got five methods for that, it needs to be long enough that you cover the five things and give people enough detail to go and implement them. Now, that could be five pages. You definitely want, when it's free content, you want to keep it shorter because it's more, it's more consumable. The shorter it is, the easier it is for someone to be able to take it, read it, get it, and apply it to their life. So you wanna make it easy for people to consume and implement. If you are giving away hundreds and hundreds of pages, it just becomes another burden. It becomes another chore, another thing for people to have a wade through before they get results. So keep it quick, keep it simple um, in terms of your free content. In your paid content, the same principle applies. You need to cover, um, you need to fulfill on the promise that your ebook has made and you need to give them enough content to be able to go and get that result in the real world. So however long that takes. So, you know, it could mean that your ebook is short. The value of the ebook is not measured in the number of pages. The value of the ebook is measured in the impact of the information to the reader. So it could be five or 10 pages and still worth hundreds of thousands of dollars because it's, it's, in what, it's about what that information does for them, not how many um, pages are in, the, uh, are in the ebook. I hope that helps. Another question from Nyo, I hope I pronounced your name right. 
I want to write a book about my experience to help other women grow who are in the situation I was in. How do I structure such a book into a resource? So before you do that, um, I would ask you to go and do some research to quantify that there is a group of women out there who are facing the problem that you were facing and they are looking for an answer to that problem. That absolutely has to be there before you go and create any content. Because before you create content, you need to know you're creating something that there's a demand for. You're creating something that people really want. So I, I would encourage you to go and see if you, can you find out where these women that you see as being the readers of your book, where are they already congregating online? Go and eavesdrop on some conversations, survey them if you have to, set up some one-to-one -one conversations where you can speak to them in person, over the phone or face-to-face, -to, -face, to find out like what are their challenges, what is it that they say they really, really want. You need to create your content that way. Like Many people make a mistake with their content, which is like, well, I've got the story to tell, and this is really about me fulfilling my need to share my story, but you know, it hasn't been aligned with, well, where is the group of people out there that really need to hear that? So this is what we call in the online province university, finding the sweet spot. So, you know, I believe that, you know, I've talked about natural monopoly and that there's a group of people out there that you are meant to serve. So, I, you know, this comes from Frederick Berkner who says, your vocation is where your passion meets the world's great hunger. So clearly you're passionate about this. You have, you, you've, you've had a life experience that you want to, um, to share to help people who are in your situation. But, what we don't know yet, and this is what you need to go and find out, is that there is a group of people going, I need help with that. So, for example, when I created clientmagnets.com, which was my first online business, how that came about is that my offline business was working with corporates. I had been selling training services to corporates. It was a trading time for money business. I also had some open programs, and I noticed about 20% of the people who were coming on my open programs were people who were self-employed. They weren't corporates, they were people who were working for themselves and they needed the phone to drum up business because what they really needed was clients. They didn't need cold calling. Cold calling was a means to an end for them. It was what they thought they needed to do to get clients. And when I saw these people coming to my training courses and I could see how much they were struggling, I realized actually I've, I've got more expertise to share with those people than I'm covering in my cold calling trainings because these are specifically about using the phone to get business. And, and I re recognized that there were other things that I did, both in terms of my attitude, in terms of like how I was already sharing content and getting a name and a reputation and how I'd set myself up to become a client magnet. So basically I had, people were ringing me. This was the ironic thing in my business. I, it was a cold calling business. After a year into it, I didn't need to cold call at all. I had a name and a reputation and people were seeking me out, but they were seeking me out because I'd done things in my marketing to make sure that I was visible in the places where my audience was hanging out. And even back then I was using lead magnets. I just didn't call it a lead magnet back then because um, I invited people. The first step was to come and download a free report from me or to come and ask for a free report. And back then I wasn't even doing it online. Like people had to phone up to get the free report. So this will tell you how long ago it was. But what, what, so what was coming about there is I had experience and then I realized that there was a certain type of person coming and so Client Magnets was actually created and I really do feel like it was a calling to help those people because I'm like there are these really talented people here, they're struggling, they're in pain because they haven't got clients but also the real loss is that the people that they're meant to be serving over here aren't even getting all the benefits of working with those people. It's like to me that's everybody, that's a lose-lose, everybody's losing out. And I recognized that I had um, a, a skills and abilities and experience that could help bridge that gap. And that's why, that's what Plant Magnets was about. So finding the sweet spot was about noticing what the audience wanted and then really looking at my inventory and going, what do I have, what do I know that can help them? So that's the way you do it. Okay, let's fly on with these questions. So uh, this is an interesting one from Debbie. So Debbie's saying, how do I find a product? Well, I really recommend that you create your own products. Like the model that, that has really worked for me, and let, listen, there's lots of models for making money online. So, you know, if you wanted to learn about how to go and sell products on Amazon, that, that's, that's not something that I cover in the Online Profits University. That's like a different 
uh, topic in terms of selling physical products and there are great programs out, out, out there. The model I've used is online information products and that's where I basically am, am packaging my expertise into training programs digital products, ebooks, things that can be delivered and accessed online. So they're available 24 seven, 365 days of the year. That's enabled me to increase my distribution. And the other beauty is I have control over those products and my products. So I'm, I'm not now reliant on a supplier who suddenly puts his prices up and my margin is reduced. Now the other great thing about information products is, is that the profit margins are huge compared to physical products online. So if you're selling physical products through Amazon, for example, Amazon wants their cut, you have to pay for the cost, you know, the physical cost of the product. By the time you've done all the pieces, your, your, your margins might be quite reduced. It's still a nice business model and very scalable. But the one I specialize in, and the one that we focus on inside the Online Profits University, is information products. So that's basically building a business around unique expertise that you have or that you can bring in that solves a problem that you know a distinct target audience has and that model if you want it can be a million dollar business because there are just certain structures and things that you can put into it and certainly it's a model that just about any niche you could be making an extra three to five thousand ten thousand a month online when you're set up prof properly so we teach this in the online profits university and you know so if it sounds of interest i really encourage you to come and check it out we are doing a 48 hour special at the moment and one of the bonuses in the Online Profits University is something I was talking about at the start of this live stream which uh, is available for, well it's not quite 48 hours now because we kicked off this morning but it's, you know inside the next 48 hours. Um, it's called Pro Profit Without Products and it's a special training that I've added in for people who don't have a product yet and they're not going to have a product for several months and it basically is like okay how can we get you making money now with what you've already got one of my mottos is do what you can with what you've got where you are and um, profit without products really solves that because even if you have no list at the moment if you have contacts on your phone um you are in a position to profit without products and the cool thing is it doesn't have to be being all sleazy and you actually trying to sell your friends or anything like that it really is as simple as sending people a link to go get more information with you know a, a, a heartfelt recommendation that's it um, so that's a bonus that's available so if you want to go and check out the online profits university do now more on products because I talked about using this affiliate marketing and so this is a good um, time to answer Gail's question so Gail says how do you find appropriate affiliate products there are plenty, but for my niche and tri tribe, there seem to be very few. So there are two places that I would go to try and find those products. So, well, actually, I'm going to say three things about this. The first thing is, depending on what you want, um, certain products are, I would say, make more strategic sense than others. So one area that I've done very well is by recommending what we call software as a service. So I make the bulk of my affiliate commissions through encouraging people to use tools. So for example, lead pages, I mentioned lead pages. We haven't put an affiliate link on this live stream, but I do promote that as an affiliate. And lead pages is a paid monthly service. I have, there's another service that I recommend to my clients to use because it, it solves a problem in terms of creating and distributing their product. And again, it's a monthly subscription. Now, here's why that's great. You do the work once, you get paid, 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 paid. I have one affiliate partner that each month we get anywhere between 400 and 1,000 pounds a month. So that's between, what, 500 to 1,200, 12, $1,300 every single month. And that was from one promotion that I did in January 2015. So I took action nearly two years ago, and I'm still getting paid for that month after month after month. Now you might say, oh, well, it's all right for you, Bernadette, you've got a big list, but I want you to get the underlying principle here. Even if you've only got a small list, or even if you're only starting with a small base, be thinking about recurring in income. 
It never gets old. Recurring passive income never ever gets old. And this is a really powerful way. If you want to set up streams of recurring passive income, go and find a product, ideally one that you're already using, that you know your target audience would need to use, and then tell your audience to go use that product. You just solved a problem by connecting them with a resource, and now you're going to earn commission recurring every month for as long as they stay using that program. And then there are even things you can do to encourage them to stay longer. Like you could add in additional trainings on the software or how you're using it just for added value because you're, you're getting paid month after month after month. So I, I would be looking for, so that's one of my criteria when I'm looking for products. I like things that are, um, where there's that monthly recurring income built in. And the other thing um, that I like to look for is that it's a product or program that is evergreen. And by that I mean that I could send someone the link 365 days of the year, 24 seven, and they can click into it. So a lot of things that are sold online these days are sold using Jeff Walker's launch model, which means that they're open maybe once or twice a year, but then the rest of the year they're not open. Well, I am less interested in promoting those kind of pro um, products because if I have someone in front of me in January who is the perfect customer for product X, I want to know I can make the recommendation, we can get them started. Because the whole idea is about solving that problem that the customer has. I don't want them to have to then wait until the provider of that product or service opens the doors again. You know, that's another six months to wait. So I look for, those are the two main criteria I look for. Now, the other thing that you want to look for is you want to look for, you know, evidence that, that you know, these providers have a good conversion system set up. There's no point you send in hundreds of people who are interested and warm leads for um, something if they, if they have a pants system for converting that into paying business. So let me show you some things where you can go and get this sort of insider information. So if you go to ClickBank, um, you can do a search on ClickBank um, and you can start looking for products that are already selling. And the types of information you'll get on ClickBank is what, what that product is already converting at. And that helps you to get an estimate and a gauge of, okay, so if I send people to this product sales page, what am I likely to see as a return? This is a type of thinking that I encourage right from the outset in the Online Profits University, because anything you do in business, anything you put your time or energy into, you want to see a return on investment for that time and that energy. And so when you go to look at products, you, there might be 10 potential products that you could recommend to your audience. And I would say one of the big criteria also, you need to love it. You need to feel great about it. I will not um, recommend anything that, that I'm not using, that I don't, you know, that I don't love. <laughs> I, it, it's got to be right up there to get my endorsement. You'll see there's very few things. Um, that I actually recommend online. So that's another criteria. But let's say if then it comes down to you, there's two potential products that you could choose. You're like, which one would I recommend? You know, you really want to see which is going to bring me the biggest return on investment. And certainly there's other ways that we could evaluate this, but I'm probably going to complicate it too much if I go into that right now. But certainly looking at, you know, if I get 100 people to click on that page, what can I expect to see? in terms of commissions being earned or paid to me. And remember guys, what we're talking about now is profiting without products. And this is a, the, these are viable methods, these are viable techniques for you to add into an existing online business. But if you're just getting started online, this is actually where I recommend you start. That you don't have to wait until your own product or program is ready to, to launch. You can actually go and tap into Tap into other people's conversion systems. If someone else has taken the time to go and build out a converting sales funnel, they've done all the testing. They've done all the heavy lifting. You know, they lost money on Facebook ads figuring out what exactly the right messaging was. And now you can stroll up with your list and you can just recommend that product or program and know it puts money in the bank. It's like, that's, that's a very, very, very nice business model. So Profit Without Products right now is a bonus that we're giving with the Online Profits University. So if you click on the link, it'll be in the chat here or above the, um, above the page for the next 48 hours, it's a bonus which is available. Right, let us, um, 
Okay, uh, so I've got nine minutes to go because I actually have another call. Um, Nathan says, do you host third party books on your channel? I don't host third party books, Nathan, but I do recommend other products and services. And what I've just said, it kind of gives you the indication of like what my criteria are for that. Okay, so let's dive back into these questions. Um, right, so this is a great one from Helen. Helen dear love, what a lovely name. Um, Helen says, hi Helen. My business partner and I have a comprehensive coaching online package to help women have a natural stress-free menopause, which is almost ready to launch. Do you think we should do an ebook first as a prequel? I think she means pre-qualifier from that. Um, we have 700 plus subscribers via, via a free download guide to recognizing your hormonal imbalances. Well, that is, that's great you've got 700, um, because the fact that that many people has already raised their hands shows that um, there's interest in what you have to offer. We like to start with a really, really simple product launch. And so I would say, you don't necessarily need to do an ebook, but I would, before you launch your product, maybe have two to three weeks where you're sharing content which um, is related to what you cover in your online program. So really to get people interested, uh, ideally bring in people to a blog post or maybe a Facebook Live like this, where people can ask their questions, where you can really just get some engagement and build some interest, to create a bit of buzz about the topic. And then I would launch. Now, I just like a really simple product launch, which is um, three emails, an announcement email, a reminder email, and we're closing. I definitely recommend that when you launch, you build some type of deadline into your launch. And so that might be that there's a certain, a special price if people join by a certain date. You might even go so far as saying, we are gonna close enrollment after this date because those, those um, kind of features in a launch, they really create that reason to act now, act now and they create the urgency to act now. So um, I, yeah, you're definitely thinking along the right, right lines, Helen. And you know, if you'd like my help um, getting this product launched, I urge you to check out the Online Profits University because you are at, we've got five stages of business. And what you've just told me uh, the first stage is get inspired. You're at the stage which we call get going because you've already started to grow your list and you've got your product ready to launch but you haven't made your first online sale yet. So you're very much at the get going stage and we have some fantastic content in the Online Profits University to really help you maximise that stage and get you focused on the right things in the right order. The way the Online Profits University is laid out is it's for five stages of business. One of the reasons people get stuck when it comes to getting started or growing an online business is they're using the right strategies at the wrong time. So um, you're at the get going stage and your focus is very much on about getting that first product out there on really maximizing results for that launch. And you would get connected to the training in the university to really serve you where you are now. Whereas someone like Nathan, for example, who's like, um, I've, I've got this idea for an ebook, and um, I, you, know, you know how many pages should it be? It's like I think Nathan, you would, you sound like you're more at the get inspired stage, which is you're really figuring out what you're going to offer, who you're going to, who you're going to be serving through your business, and there's some key decisions and questions to be asked at that stage to help you move forward. So it's always about connecting you with the right training for the stage of business that you're at. Okay, so. Um, so a couple of questions about promoting on Facebook. So Jennifer had said, I, have, I offer clients a free relaxation audio for signing up to my list. How often should I promote it on Facebook? Well, it's the right question and it's also the wrong question because the question really, Jennifer, is um, how can you lay out a, a sort of an ongoing promotional plan to grow your list and to get more people signing sign up for that free like relaxation audio and facebook might be one source of traffic but so could youtube so could google so could be live events so could be networking events so could be articles in an offline magazine so the question really to be asking is like how do i grow my list and i would have you focus on that first and then look at things like facebook as ways to achieve that now you could promote it all the time but if you're just banging out the same message going, come get my free audio, come get my free audio, come get my free audio, that gets old. So the way to do it is to weave it in, weave that invitation in with valuable content 
that is solving the problems that your target audience is happening having so for example if there's a certain question that they ask so yours is about relaxation so it could be they have a question what is the best way to relax at the end of a really stressful day um and so you you could say well okay this is my my top 10 tips for like at the end of a really stressful day how you get your, your blood pressure and your pulse rate down and you know really have a nice downtime into the evening so you could be, you could have some tips and then you could say if you want more you know i encourage you to come sign up for my free relaxation audio and then even some other things that they're going to get as a benefit from that so what you can hear is what the method there is basically meeting your audience where they are and then creating multiple kind of pointers and lines coming back to the thing that you want to grow your list, your lead magnet, your free audio, that's gonna grow your list. So it's great that you've got your lead magnet sorted out and you know that you're on your way. And really now for you, the big thing is list building. In the Online Profits University, because you too, I would say are at the um, get going stage, like Helen, and um, what, you, what you really need to do now is focus on growing your list. So we have a training inside the university called your first thousand subscribers. And then once you've completed that training, we give you access to other trainings on other ways that you can really ramp up um, your list. So um, we, we're actually gonna be in the new year adding in another one, which is how to grow your list to 10,000 in three months. But you know, everyone's gotta start somewhere. So you're gonna start with your first 3,000. So um, come and check out the university. I think it would be a good fit for you. Right, Mel is saying, does your strategy work in a business to business environment? Yes, Mel, it absolutely does. In fact, everything that I do in my online business, the underlying strategy is what I was doing offline before I came online. And it was, first of all, get people to raise their hands and do that by offering some piece of high perceived value, but offering it for free. And that's what I did to get people on my list. So one of the things that I used to do um, back then was I, I would get my articles published in magazines that were being read by my target audience and I would um, you know get people to sign up and then once they were on my list I focused my marketing efforts and resources and energy we were using direct mail so for it wasn't like an email which is free to send everything that we sent out it was costing us money to, to send so we really wanted to make sure that we were targeting the right people but that's how I grew my business my my business to business business um, so when I was selling to corporate, so yes, the, these strategies, I, you, you, you'll see them different in the application now because I'm selling to small businesses and individuals online now, but the principles are sound, it's exactly the same principles. Um, right, so I'll just go back to Gail's question because she was asking about affiliate programs. There's another place that you can go, in addition to Kickpank, where you can go and do some searching, you can also go to JVZoo. And then again, just remember those criteria that I talked about where you really want to be looking for recurring income if you can. You want to make sure it's set up to promote on an evergreen basis because then it's something that you can you can set up as a campaign so that when people join your list, you can be letting them know about you know the, these other products and programs, and it's then all automated. It's all on autopilot, and we show you exactly how to do that in the online profits university. Gail is a member um, at the get get smart stage. I would imagine Gail that you are. So um, yeah, Online Province University will help you to do all of that. Um, Teresa says, should you use paid marketing, i.e. Facebook, to grow your list? And the answer is absolutely, but at the right time. And so a mistake that I see people make is, you know, they hear, Facebook, 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 Facebook's great to grow on your list. It's great, it's, or, or to, yeah, to grow, to grow your list, to grow your business. If you're going to advertise, paid advertising, you need to see a return on investment. So if you are going to get a thousand people to grow your list on, on, via Facebook, and that's going to cost you one dollar per lead, say, because the prices might vary, but one dollar per lead. How soon are you going to see that thousand dollars back into your business? Well, you're going to see it depending on the quality of your conversion system after people join your list. So when people join your list, you need a process for turning that interest into paying business. And you want to know what percentage of people who join your list become paying customers and how quickly they become paying customers. 
You need that data before you start going and putting money into Facebook because otherwise you may as well just go to Vegas and take your thousand dollars and put it on the roulette table because that's essentially what you're doing. If you are investing in paid advertising without knowing those numbers behind the scene and having a reasonable expectation of the return that you're going to you're gonna see, you should not be doing it. So what we do is we encourage people, there's three ways of getting traffic to grow your list. We call it buy, borrow or create. So um, we encourage people to start with creating traffic. You do that by offering out quality content in places where your target audience is already hanging out online or offline. So think about, um, you know, networks, associations, um, Facebook groups where your audience is already hanging out, getting in front of them and then really offering your, your lead magnet. That's how you create traffic. The next thing to do, and this is the next one I would move to, is to borrow traffic. And this is where you align with other people who are targeting a similar audience to you, but your offerings are complementary. And so definitely um, match up with those people and you can do promotions. And again, the nice thing about it is no money's being outlaid. You only pay, you will pay commissions to the joint venture partners, but only after business has been done. And then finally, when you'll know your numbers, it makes sense to step up to paid advertising. And so absolutely, that paid advertising is the way that you're going to scale. You know, if you really want to grow your business, you are going to have to do paid advertising. You are a fool if you're not using paid advertising when you have a proven conversion system. But don't do it until you have a proven conversion system. So again, this is why in the Online Profits University, we're passionate about matching you up with the right steps in the right order. So, you know, get inspired is about figuring out who you're going to serve, what they need, what you're going to offer. Um, get going is about putting that into action and getting paid, getting that first product offering out there and putting some money in the bank. And then when you get to the Get Smart level, that's when we're looking to ramp things up. And that would be the point where I would say it makes sense to add in paid advertising into the mix, but not before then. So I hope that has helped you. Um, and Andrew has asked, I need more customers. How can you help? So I've covered quite a lot in the call today um, about this. And I realise we've gone past time. Sorry, I got a bit carried away there. So let's see, Caroline. Um, Sally's saying, love this idea so much. Right, Joseph, out of 5,000 emails, how many will buy? Do you know what, Joseph? I'm not gonna answer that question now because I'm five minutes late for my next call. So I'm gonna jump off, but we are gonna do another live stream um, tomorrow or Saturday. Um, so I'll make sure that I cover that question on our next, next live stream. So I hope that was helpful, folks. And um, thank you for your time today. And as I say, come and check out the Online Profits University. And um, I look forward to seeing you on the next live stream. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.